Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review is brought to you in part by Dean's Hobby Stop in Owasso, Michigan. Dean's has one of the Midwest's largest selections of used kits at great prices. They also feature new kits and supplies as well. Call Dean's to get their mail order list featuring hundreds of vintage kits or check their website for great deals on both new and classic models. This review covers the Pontiac GTO Super Stalker. It's a 125 skill kit from MPC number 939. Now the uh, Super Stalker here is a skill level 2 kit. Originally issued around 74 and reissued in 2005 by Model King. This, this uh, latest issue uh, in 2021 has got a lot of the generic parts that came in the kits originally. and. Um, a lot less detail than some of the more modern kits would have, but still a nice nostalgic model. It contains 109 parts molded in white, clear, and chrome. And the tires are nicely detailed. They're hollow with pad printed lettering on the sidewalls. Now the instructions also seem to state that it can be snapped together, but this is not a snap kit. You'll need glue. And when completed, the model is about 8 inches long, 3 and a quarter inches wide, and 2 inches high. Oh, hey, I hear um, Newt back there tapping on the glass. He's our program director, and uh, I guess he's got a question about this one. Uh, what's your question, Newt? That car looks too nice to be raced on a dirt track. Uh, you're right, Newt. Uh, this is a really nice-looking car. But you got to understand, this is a super stalker. It's not like the cars that you normally see uh, in the early races on your dirt track. Um, this one's got sponsors, and quite often was submitted by dealerships. Uh, who would uh, supply the cars to, you know, race uh, crews and uh, so that they could get their name out there for advertising purposes. What is the tiny orange bumper in the front good for? Good question, Newt. That's actually a, a little Nerf bar there to give a little added protection to, um, like, fragmented fenders that might find their way and poke into the uh, radiator. Because if you get a leak in your radiator on a circle track, you're out of the race. Here are the contents of the kit. As you can see, they're pretty cleanly molded, but this is a single purpose build kit. Um, you can only make a stock car out of it. Now, um, it's got some nice glass and tires, and um, we'll be using mostly model master liquid cement, sometimes super glue for fragile parts, and white or clear glue for the glass. Uh, and also, um, we'll be using the decals that come with the kit. They're very colorful. Uh, they've got a lot of options here as far as numbering and uh, special decals and sponsors go. But you'll need to use some setting solution on the large stripes and, and large parts to get them to conform to the uh, body. The construction starts with the wheels, so I painted the outside wheels white uh, uh, with some hubs for the front red uh, as well as the... Um, steel coloring on the uh, wheel nuts and the internal um, backing hubs are red uh, and of course the uh, the uh, backside uh, the wheel backside hubs and rims are uh, kind of a steel color now remember that you have to scrape paint or uh, chrome plating uh, from any surface that you want to glue together and the um, construction of the wheel starts by uh, putting the, um, the wheel halves together so assemble those first with the inserts captured in between, and once they're dry, the tires can simply be slipped over the wheels. Now we can uh, prep the body for um, paint, and there's only really two pronounced parting lines that, that stand out. Uh, they're up here on the, the top of the roof, or the you know a pillar there. So go ahead and, sand, and scrape and sand those smooth uh, to your liking, and get this ready for primer. Um, after you've primed it, uh, go over it again and remove any imperfections and a light sand and then let that dry thoroughly. Then uh, you can paint your body. Uh, I used a, uh, a product called One Shot Enamel uh, and an airbrush and I used a, a Primrose uh, that's number 11130 with a little bit of bright red in it, 104, to, to give it a little bit, a bit of uh, orange um, bite to it. Now, uh, it was uh, pretty much a a 70 Pontiac color. Now after your paint has thoroughly dried you can start to apply your decals 
and the long stripes they go on pretty easily but you really should have some setting solution use plenty of warm water to position those and once they're in place smooth them out with something uh, smooth um, either a tissue or a cotton swab get all the air bubbles out and you can apply your uh, setting solutions to keep them in place once those decals are dry and you can handle the ve uh, vehicle you can add the uh, highlights like the chrome uh, accent uh, by either using a sharpie or a chrome pen or, or even some uh, of the bare metal foil and as you can see uh, uh, hood pins etc the trim that's uh, on the car they, they get a nice uh, highlighted treatment and now we'll have you get these parts out from the kit the windows the uh, nerf bar bumper and the rear valence there uh, the rear valence is painted the same as the body color and uh, a bumper a sticker called the license plate has been added back there. Now we're going to uh, install the uh, uh, the glass there with some white glue. You can see it's got some holes in it the way they used to mount them. Uh, and scrape the paint off so that the glue adheres. And use some clear glue there to uh, put the windows into place. Now use some regular glue to attach the valance in place in the back along with the uh, bumper. Make sure you scrape paint or chrome. And then also add that nerf bar into the front end. Next we'll begin chassis assembly and also note the battery there has been painted uh, black with some highlighted uh, uh, you know steel for the posts and caps etc. Um, now the internal sections of the frame are painted uh, aluminum and the um, frame portions itself are, were painted with the dark red. Now we can uh, assemble the chassis components here. Now the um, chassis parts uh, were built for different model kits. So use the forward hole to build the longer version uh, wheelbase for this kit. Get out the uh, parts to build the engine that you see here. And I use some Pontiac blue on the block, the oil pan, heads, and the water pump. The, the, now the intake manifold, distributor base, alternator, and the air top cleaner and transmission are painted aluminum color. The fan and the pulleys are black, uh, as well as the starter, and then the fan belt is a flat black. The air cleaner elements and headers are flat white. The carburetor is a gold tone, and the oil filter was painted orange. The bell housing is red. So after those are dry, uh, we can start to assemble the engine. You see here, and uh, if you've got any questions about sequencing, the instructions are at the back of the review. Now get the parts out that you see here for the uh, front suspension. The cross member is painted uh, red and the tie rod spindles and springs are steel color. The steering wheel uh, steering can be posed so uh, no glue should be used on the spindles and tie rod if you want to do that. So go ahead and install those pieces. Make sure you uh, scrape the, the tiny little amount of paint from the gluing uh, portions. And then this is how it's going to look when you're finished. Uh, shows you all of the arrangements and uh, construction. And now get out the pieces for the rear suspension. Uh, and we're going to assemble the differential and the, uh, the cover there. Uh, also note that um, we've painted the uh, shocks yellow and that the uh, coil springs are steel. This kit also comes with some uh, leaf springs, but that's for a different model. So we won't be using those. So go ahead and assemble the rear end into position. And so here's a photo of the, um, the close-up of the rear end so that you can see how the parts are positioned. And now we'll add these pieces, um, the um, uh, lower rear end locating bars and the rear part of the drive shaft. You can see drive shafts painted as steel and the um, uh, locating bars a you know medium uh, metallic black. So you can see here the uh, locating bars and the uh, rear portion of the drive shaft is in place. You'll see here the uh, upper locating bar top and also there's a pan hard bar. Now the two red parts are part of the roll cage and those are parts 55 and 56. There are two different lengths um, for the different wheelbases for this build. So use the longer of the two. You see here the um, upper and lo lower locating bars in place uh, along with the battery. You see that's in place and the small roll cage parts are located into position too. And now assemble and um, you can hand paint these pieces here for uh, the firewall steering and the pedals and um, the upper view of the front suspension here uh, is seen along with then the uh, the completed firewall assembly. Now the completed firewall assembly, accelerator pedal, master cylinder, radiator and the front of the roll cage can be shown seen here.
And now as you see the parts are all assembled here they they go to together pretty well the most of the glue joints are very positive uh, and positioning uh, locations so you should have no trouble with that uh, now we're going to arrange these components um, the, the uh, fire bottle there the extinguisher is, is red with um, you know steel and uh, also we're going to get out the shifter the seat front shocks front strut rods and the completed engine assembly as well as you can see the seat here uh, was painted with a um, uh, medium uh, gloss black and some uh, highlighted with some red tape seat belts and some uh, silver trappings so that of course is a racing seat and we're going to um, get those uh, all uh, cleaned up the suspension parts um, are painted similar to the ones in the rear and glue those into place now you see here the right side and the rear part of the roll cage they've been uh, installed into place and painted the same red as the rest of the frame and so you see here um, this is of course the uh, driver's side uh, part of the roll cage and the left side of the roll cage has a retaining net uh, molded into it and I modified that net uh, I cut it loose and added a small rod made from some uh, plastic axle material uh, from my parts box and glued it into the down position so because when the driver's not in the car the net would not be attached to the upper roll bar and here you see the uh, left side of the roll cage now in place and now we'll work the drive shaft and the uh, retaining brace there uh, along with the lower um, chassis support and uh, we're going to glue those into place uh, and you can see those right here uh, into in position and next we'll gather these pieces um, the collectors for the headers the part of the roll cage and uh, the shield for the headers along with the rear view mirror you can see uh, the mirror painted a semi-gloss black uh, the shield there and the shrouding is uh, aluminum color and um, the instructions call for part number 40 the roll cage to be located to the radiator but this is not correct uh, as that part attaches to the firewall and the rear part of the roll cage now the collector for the headers also should be left off until after the body is installed. And now uh, pay attention to the color scheme here. Once again roll, roll cage parts are painted red. Um, shielding and plates are aluminum. And uh, one flat black section there for the fuel cell. Uh, now the uh, hose, the vent system for the engine, the rear inner panel, center section of the roll cage and the fuel cell are ready uh, after they dry and can be put into place. So follow the steps and the instructions and remember that the rear panel must be in place before the roll cage part can be glued in properly. So here's the dash. Uh, it's pretty minimalist. Um, it's uh, of course aluminum color and I printed out a couple of uh, decals uh, from images that I found just to, just to put in place to uh, give it a little more uh, legitimacy. Now along with the uh, inner panel painted uh, aluminum we're going to uh, add those uh, pieces of the wheels and tires uh, into place. So uh, here are the, uh, uh, the wheels and tires snapped onto the axles and that uh, shielding put into place. Uh, as you can see it's starting to come together as a real and whole model. And now the whole thing comes together we're going to uh, spread the sides of the uh, body a little bit after we've located our gluing points on the inside. Add a little strong glue in there. Uh, epoxy if you need it and then uh, glue the body into position making sure that it's symmetrical and everything is uh, aligned uh, wheel wells etc and make sure that it's level and let that dry and now after that body's into position the collector for the headers um, can be mounted now it, it kind of sticks through the body side and it makes mounting in the body difficult so I used a toothpick stuck in the opening of the collector to hold on to it and then guided it up inside the interior and lined it up with the headers. Now it's a bit tricky but um, that I found that to be the best way to install these. And so these are mostly all the parts that I had left over mostly optional parts and decals that uh, were not used. Well there you have it your model is complete uh, and it's really nice looking kit uh, head turner uh, uh, for your display shelf. Now the kit goes together pretty easily um, and there are a few parts that are tricky like the collectors, uh, collectors but um, typical 
uh, of race cars the roll cage needs to be uh, paid attention to so that it's assembled uh, symmetrically and, and positively and uh, you might want to use some super glue on those uh, to make sure that you know it, it looks good uh, and stays into position but um, once again uh, it's not that hard uh, to build it's a, a nice example of the old stockers and if I were you I'd buy one and put it on my shelf well we hope you like this premium scale model kit review and so that you don't miss any more please subscribe to our YouTube channel you can do that by clicking on the icon lower right of any of our reviews and you can find us on Facebook or our website, rightonreplicas.com. Thanks.